Okay. So let's let's do the same example now, but with a different method, which is the Macaulay. I can write here Macaulay. Macaulay's bracket method. So basically, this method to solve this, this uh, shear force and many moment equations, it makes use of the Macaulay's bracket property, which is something like this. Imagine you have, so these square brackets are the Macaulay brackets. If you have something like this, x minus a power n, which we have a lot. Look, I can give you some example. Here in beams we have, for example, look at this. We have x minus 2 over there. We have x minus 2 square. So our a in this case is going to be a equal to 2. The exponent n is 2 in this case, right? So we have a lot of this kind of expressions in our many uh, moment and shear force equations. <coughs> so if we are using a Macaulay bracket like this, a square uh, bracket like this, this square bracket is going to be equal to x minus a power n if x is greater and equal to a. Okay? And it is going to be zero if x is lower than a. Okay? So this property of Macaulay bracket, we're going to take advantage of this property. So for example, imagine you have here a equal to 2, for example. If your x is bigger than 2, it means you will get x minus a power n. Okay? If your x is in the region lower than 2, it means this term is going to be equal to 0. Will not exist. It's a very simple property. It's a very simple property uh, which will be of uh, great use in our, in our solution for this kind of problems in, in, in beams. Okay? If... If... So, this is equal to x minus a power n if x is greater or equal to a. And this Macaulay bracket is going to be equal to 0 if your x is lower than a. Okay? So, this is one thing. Another thing... <coughs> another thing we are going to have to use in when we use this method is we are going to cut the beam only one time. So in the previous example we did cut the beam here six times, right? <coughs> to get the equations for the six different regions of the beam. In this method, Macaulay bracket, we are going to cut this beam only in one place, one time. And that needs to be let me just copy that needs to be, you have two options to do that. Or you cut here and look at the left side. So you need to cut on the last uh, section of your beam. It can be FG between F and G. And then if you decide to cut between F and G, you need to look at the left side. Basically, you need to look at everything of your beam that is on the left side of that interval or region. Or you have another option. If you don't want to cut on, on this between F and G, you can cut your beam between A and B. But then you will have to look at the right side of your beam. If you cut between A and B and look at the left side, then it will not work. All right? So this is... Another rule you need to be very careful with. So if you decide to cut 
on this last section of your beam, you need to look at the left side. If you decide to cut on the first section of your beam, then you will have to look at the right side. Okay? No, the external forces there are there. No, if there was an external force acting on A or G, can we still use this method? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you can use this method. It, it, it doesn't matter. The only thing, we, the, and this is the third condition to use Macaulay bracket, is if you have distributed loads, like we have in this example, we have to do something more, which is we will have, for example, if I decide that I want to cut here and look at the left side of my beam, then I will need to extend my distributed load all the way until the end. So I have to do something like this. Okay? So if we have distributed loads, like we have in this example, in order to use the Macaulay bracket method, I will have to have my distributed load finishing at one hand of the beam, okay? If I decided to cut here and look at the left side, that one hand I, it needs to finish is point G in this case. I need to extend my distributed load all the way until it gets to point G. But if I do this, only this, I am destroying the, the, the equilibrium of the beam, right? I'm putting some artificial load there that it, it was not there at the beginning, right? So I have to do something more. This is still not enough. I have to compensate this with a load below my beam in the opposite direction of that one. Okay? So this distributed load that I have here in blue, they will cancel each other. They will cancel each other. So at the end, I have the same loading that I had in my original beam because this one in blue they cancel each other but there is a big difference now all my distributed loads they end or they finish at point G at the end of my beam right and then yes I can cut now my beam uh, in this point and look at everything I have on the left side of my of my beam. Okay? So let's do this. Let's do this. So I'm going to exactly use this uh, this free body diagram here. So I'm going to use this one because I don't want to draw it again. And I'm going just to delete this bit here. I have on the right side of my section plane. Oops. All right. And of course, I will need to have here my, again, so Vx and Mx, my internal force and moments, they are still there. And of course, my x variable starts in point A and goes all the way until it reaches the point where I am cutting my beam. Right? So let me just, this load here of 30 kilonewtons is a bit hidden here. Let me expand. <coughs> right? Does this make any sense or not? So, we are going to use now the Macaulay bracket property in, in, in getting our equations, but I want you to be very aware of this. If you have a distributed load, you need to make sure 
this distributed load finishes at the end of your at, at one extremity of your beam okay and that's what I did here so I extended my distributed load but then I need to add a, a, a symmetric <coughs> distributed load below so they, they cancel each other so I don't I don't destroy the equilibrium of, of my beam and then I have as you can see when I cut my beam I have all the distributed loads ending at that point and that's something you need, you need to have, okay? And now we are just going to do something like writing the equilibrium equations, nothing very special. Starting with summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero. Now I'm going to do this a bit slower because this is going to be a bit different. Look. I'm going to consider this 20 kilonewtons first. Let's look at this one first. So I'm going to include this 20 kilonewtons here, minus 20. And I'm going to do something like this. Look, I'm going to explain, don't worry. I'm going to multiply this 20 by Macaulay bracket x minus 1 and I'm going to put exponent zero. I'm going to explain, don't worry. So why, do I, why am I doing this? Because look, if I'm doing the analysis between point A and B, so imagine, for example, I decide to cut in point between A and B and look at left side. Imagine I decide to do this. My transverse shear force needs to be equal to zero, right? So why did I then put Macaulay bracket here, x minus 1? Because I know if my x is lower than 1, look at this. If my x, so in this case, a is equal to 1, right? If my x is lower than 1, Macaulay bracket will tell me what I have there is going to be equal to 0. Which is correct because, look. As you said, if I cut my beam here, I need to have a zero transverse shear force in this region, right? So this is being guaranteed by this Macaulay bracket. In my x lower than 1, it means sections in between point A and B corresponds to x lower than 1, right? This Macaulay bracket here will guarantee that this term is equal to 0. So this 20 does not appear, right? And why do I have the exponent 0 there? I have the exponent 0 there because for x greater than 1, imagine now I am cutting my beam here between point B and C. This term is not going to be 0 anymore, right? It needs to be equal to 20, isn't it? So Macaulay bracket is telling me now that x is going to be bigger than a, which is equal to 1. a is equal to 1, right? x is going to be bigger than a. So I'm looking at this section here between B and C, X is greater than one. So I will have a term that is non-zero. It's going to be X minus A. So that's why I have the exponent zero because anything with power zero is equal to one. So this means this Macaulay brackets that I have here works when I cut the beam in this section for x lower than 1, that will give me 0. But it also works when my x is bigger than 1, because then I will have x minus 1 power 0, which is equal to 1. Then I will have 20 kilonewtons over there. You see? You see how, how it works or not? So the power 0 here is very important to have. Uh, so the number inside the bracket, do you pick it or the 1? No, which number? This minus one? Yeah. Yeah, this minus one is the location of my 20 kilonewtons force, right? I know that if I cut before I get until this location, I, I cannot have these 20 kilonewtons in my equation. So this needs to be equal to zero. <coughs> if I'm, I cut after x equal to one, I need to have these 20 kilonewtons then there. But I need to have only 20 kilonewtons, not 20 kilonewtons times x minus 1. That's why I have here exponent 0. So this means x minus 1 exponent 0 means it's going to be equal to 1. I will have only 20 kilonewtons.
right? So this one, basically, this A equal to 1 is the location of my load, 20 kN, all right? Yes? If I change the? No, no, do you change the x according to the x? Change the x. X or a? X. Well, x is, x is this coordinate, right? The x minus 1 is 1 in the bracket. You have a different value in the bracket. X, yes. But in this case, it doesn't matter for these 20 kN. It doesn't matter why. Because if x is lower than 1, this will always be 0. Yes. That's what Macaulay bracket method is telling you here. Okay, so if you put x equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, you will always have a zero there, right? If x is bigger than one, for example, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.5, this term is going to be x minus, uh, sorry, 1.1 1 .1 minus one, but then you have power zero, exponent zero. Any number with the exponent zero is equal to one. So it doesn't matter which x you put there, in fact, right? I don't know if you understand what I mean. So basically, you will have here two conditions, okay? For x lower than 1, it means you are cutting your beam between point A and B. But what Macaulay bracket tells you, x lower than 1, this term is going to be equal to 0. All right? Then you have another condition, which is for x... So this is lower than equal. For x bigger than 1... Macaulay bracket tells you this term is not going to be zero. It's going to be equal to this. And this is x minus 1 exponent 0. So this is exactly what you have here, right? I transformed the square bracket into a curved bracket <coughs> with the same exponent. But then look, you have this with an exponent 0. So this is always equal to 1. Even if you have different values for x, it, it, this will always be equal to 1. Yeah. So, so just to clarify, so a is this, right? A, yeah, a, yes. A is the, yeah, the location of the, the, the loads, yes. Yeah, look, look at here. You have x minus a. So if x is the distance in the horizontal direction, of course, a needs to be a coordinate in the horizontal direction, right? You cannot mix coordinates in the horizontal direction with with forces or with the coordinates in the y direction, right? So, of course, this a is always a coordinate in the x direction or is a distance in the x direction, right? And that distance is always the location of the loads. Yes? So what does the index of m represent? n. m. Where is m? m. That is an n. Yeah, I have uh, this problem with my writing. <laughs> my m's have an extra leg. Okay. Or okay, I, I, I what determines this value? You write M's you write M's like this, I write M's like this. <laughs> so this one, what I mean is that this this here is a N, not the M, okay? Yeah. What you have here is a very general expert. This N can be zero, one, two, three. Or, or more, right? What, what, what determines is exactly what I'm saying now. Look, why do you need to have a, a zero exponent here? Exactly, because if, for example, imagine you have here exponent 1. Then at the end you will have a force which is going to be multiplying a distance. And you don't want that here, right? That, that is a moment, it's not a force, right? So this exponent depends on the, on the condition. We, 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 we will do that, okay? When we go for distributed load, just wait a little bit more. Yes? Sorry? Yeah. No, 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 no. But if you cut at not 0.5, you will have. If you cut at not 0.5, and if your x, if your a is one, in this example, right? If you cut, if you have x equal to not 0.5, which of these two conditions are you in? 
In the first one or in the second one? Second one. So it needs to be equal to zero. Okay, but I mean, like, should we just set it equal to zero? Yeah. But I mean, that's Yeah, exactly. Because, and that, that's what you need to do. Because if you cut the beam here, you should not have, if you cut the beam here and look at the left side, how much should it be your, your shear force? If you cut your beam here and if you look at the left side, how much should you get for your shear force? Zero. So this needs to be zero. Right? We are going to see that when we plot the diagrams, you are going to see how we are going to do it, okay? Now, I think the best way to think is, okay, we have these 20 kilonewtons at point B, which corresponds x equal to 1, okay? So you just include the minus 20, then you multiply by a Macaulay bracket, x minus 1, because your load is at point 1, so your A is equal to 1, okay? And then you need to put a 0 uh, exponent, because otherwise uh, you will get, um, if it is not 0, you will get a, a force times the distance. That is a moment, it's not a force, right? But you, we are going to see, yeah. Sorry? Please, can you, can you make some silence, please? Here. If x is lower than 1, this needs to be equal to 0. Yes, that's what you have here, right? It's, it's, it's here, look. If x is lower than 1... Sorry, can you please make silence? I cannot hear the question, please. The first time you wrote it, you put x is less than 1 and x is greater than or equal to. And this time you got less, x is less than or equal to. Here, no. Look, you are, lo you are referring to this one. So, so x lower uh, or equal to a. But then you will not get zero. You get this, which is correct. This is the same what I have here. If it is greater than a, you get this, which is always equal to 1 because you have exponent 0. No, it's, not, it's, it's exactly the same. Then you have, in the first one, you have x lower than a, you should get 0. That's what you have here. X lower than A, you should get zero, <laughs> isn't it? Lower or equal. Lower or equal, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's going to It doesn't matter. If, if it is equal, you get A minus A. That is automatically zero, right? Isn't it? OK, let's continue. We don't have much time. All right. So now let's move. So we did we did the, the twenty kilonewtons. This is done. It's here. Okay. Now let's focus on this eighty-five kil kilonewtons. This reaction. So let's leave the distributed load to the end. So let's get the contribution from this eighty-five kilonewtons. So let's do a similar thinking. So if, look at this, try, try to follow me. If, for example, I'm doing the analysis, if I cut my beam in this section, or this, or this, or this, 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 before x is equal to 4, for any section that I cut that will have my x lower than 4, do you think I need to have the contribution of these 85 kilonewtons or not? No. So if I do something like this, if I add here my 85 and multiply by a Macaulay bracket, x minus 4, then every time my x is lower than 4, so in this case my a is equal to 4, I will always get a 0 there, which makes sense because I don't want, I don't want any loading when I cut my beam for x lower than 4, right? 
I don't want these 85 kilonewtons being there. Okay? Now, we have to... We have now to see what happens for x greater than 4. For x greater than 4, is equivalent to say, okay, I'm going to cut my beam in any of these sections I have there in red and look at the left side. So do I need to have my 85 kilonewtons there or not? Yes, I need to have, right? But Macaulay bracket also tells me that my x, if my x is bigger than or is greater than 4, I will have x minus 4. Okay? In my equation, right? So do, do you think I need to have 85 times x minus 4? Is this correct? That is not a force, right? That is a moment. So what do I need to do to make sure that for x greater than 4, I have only 85? Exponent 0. Right? You see? Then, any x... So what happens for x greater than 4? For, I can say uh, for x bigger than 4, I will have x minus 4, curved bracket, exponent 0. This is always equal to 1. So if I multiply 1 with 85, the result is 85. Always, which is correct, isn't it? <coughs> Do you see how all this works? Again, the exponent 0 here came from this condition. We need to make sure for x lower than 4, we have 0. And for x greater than 4, we have 85. OK? That's the, the reason of our. Now, distributed load. Let's. Uh, sorry, before we, d we deal with distributed load, we still have these 30 kilonewtons here. Let's do this one first. So I'm going to do it a bit quicker now. We will have to include minus 30 kilonewtons over there times Macaulay bracket. What do I include here inside Macaulay bracket? X minus 7, which is the locate, location of my load. And then exponent, again, 0. Right? And now we can work the um, distributed load. So I'm going to continue here below. So let's work this distributed load here in the top first. All of this, you see, all of this distributed load I just included inside that uh, red circle. Let's see how we can include that. So equivalent force is the area of that rectangle, which is... 10 is the height. And now I need to multiply this by the width, which is... How much is this distance from here to here? X minus 2. So Macaulay bracket, X minus 2. Look at this now. If I... For example, if I am in this region of my beam before x equal to 2, do I have any distributed load? If I look at the left side, do I have any distributed load or not? No, no. If I look at left side, if I cut here between point A and C, and look at the left side, do you see any distributed load there? No. So it means x lower than 2, Macaulay bracket tells me this needs to be equal to 0, right? Now, for x bigger than 2. x bigger than 2 means if I cut my beam after point C, like this. Any plane here after C, do I have any distributed load or not? And how much is my distributed load? For example, imagine, imagine you look at this rectangle here. When you cut your beam here, how much needs to be this distributed load? 10 times x minus 
too, isn't it? Isn't it what Macaulay Bracket is telling me here? Look, for x bigger than 2, now this is 2, right? I will get x minus 2 exponent 1. That's exactly what I have here, right? So in this case, the exponent I will have is exponent 1. I can, I can just put it here, exponent 1, right? I need to have exponent 1 here. Why? Because for x greater than 2, my equivalent force is equal to the area of the rectangle, which is 10, which is the height of the rectangle times x minus 2, which is the width of the rectangle. Right? So the exponent here now needs to be equal to 1. Okay? And the only one we need to do now is... Sorry, this is not a negative. This is a positive. This is a positive moment, right? Oh, so you're right. This, sorry. It's time to finish. This is force, it's not moment. Sorry, my mistake. Still negative, yes. So the, we need, the last one we have to do is the distributed load here below, this one below. Okay? So look at this. This one is going to be positive, so plus. Uh, let's do this one first, and then if you still have questions, then we can go back, okay? Let's do this, because it's similar, right? If you understand this one here, we are going to do now, then it's fine. If you don't understand this one, then we can repeat, okay? So, this one here below, I need to have my equivalent force, which is going to be equal to 10. 10 is the height. And then I need to multiply this by a width, which is... The width is this one, right? You agree? How much is this? How much is this distance? X minus? Six. So I need to multiply by X minus six now to have my equivalent force. But I'm going to do that using a Macaulay bracket. X minus six. Why am I using a Macaulay bracket? Because... If I am using x lower than 6, I am cutting the beam there. And then if I look at the left side, this distributed load here is not there. So this needs to be 0. And Macaulay bracket is telling me that is 0. Right? And if I look, if I cut the beam anyway after point E then I will need to get the equivalent force, which is the area of this rectangle, which is 10 times this distance, which is still x minus 6. Right? So, and Macaulay bracket tells me that if my x is greater than 6, I will have here x minus 6. if my x is greater than 6 now, right? Okay? Oops. <coughs> so, my, if my x is greater than 6, Macaulay bracket tells me I should have x minus 6, and this is correct, I should have x minus 6, because that x minus 6 times 10 will give me my equivalent force, which is the area of the rectangle that I have, right? So again, in this case, the exponent is equal to 1. And that's all the forces we have. So this needs to be equal to 0 to be in equilibrium. Oh, plus Vx, of course. Minus Vx. Yeah, minus Vx needs to be equal to 0. Okay? So in the afternoon, we will do the summation of moments for this example. And then we will plot the diagrams, okay? So that's the plan for the one hour lecture in the afternoon. Okay, we continue in the afternoon. How are you guys doing? Good lunch? You have the energy for the afternoon.
Are you sure? <laughs> All right. Okay, so in the, in the morning, so let's continue from this example. Come on, please. Let's start now. This is just one hour. If we don't, if we don't start on time, we don't have time to finish this Macaulay's bracket method, okay? So in the morning, we were doing the Macaulay bracket for this example. So let's continue from there. Hello? So let's continue from there. So we, we derived uh, the shear force equation, right? Using Macaulay brackets. So before that, we had to extend our distributed load all the way until point G so that we can then cut our beam between point F and G and then look at everything we have on the left side of that section plane and then we just wrote the equilibrium equation for the forces in the vertical direction and uh, obtained this equation for the transverse shear force Vx which we can in fact send Vx to the right hand side and say this is going to be sorry equal to Vx so how so there is a question here you need to calm down otherwise it's very difficult There are too many in the room and making noise is very, very difficult, okay? So please calm down so we can do the remaining part of this exam. So the question here was to explain which term? The, uh, the X, basically the lower line. X minus 6? Okay, so you want, so let's start with this one here. So why we have this term here, right? So this term is related to this distributed load here. All of this distributed load, all right? So we are building an equivalent force, right? Which is equal to the area of that rectangular distributed load, right? So that area is the height, which is 10. This one is 10. That's what you have here, 10, all right? And this x minus 2 is this length from here to here. This is x minus 2, right? And we are using the Macaulay bracket here. You can see the square brackets, Macaulay bracket. Why? Because we want that if we are looking at the section f with x lower than 2, for example, this section here, if we are cutting the beam with this section, if we are looking to the left side of this section, you don't have any distributed load there, right? So we want this term to be zero for x lower than 2. And we can get that by including here the Macaulay bracket. Because the Macaulay bracket tells me that if the term is lower than 2, you get zero, right? That's why we are using Macaulay brackets. Okay? Now, the exponent. The, ne the exponent here needs to be 1 because you want, you want to have an equivalent force for this distributed load, right? And that equivalent force is the area of this rectangle. The area is 10 times x minus 2. So you want, at the end, to have this product there. 10 times x minus 2. So the exponent needs to be 1, because if it is 0, you don't have this x minus 2 there, right? If, you, if it is 0, you will have 10 times 1, right? But that's not what you want. You want 10 times x minus 2. Yeah, yeah you were saying something? Uh, it's, it, it's, um, if you had it, uh, for example, the other one, minus 30 x minus 7. Yeah. 
this one here? No, seven. seven. Um, then you get minus 13. Okay, let's see. If if x is bigger than seven, you means you are cutting here somewhere your beam, right? And if you look at the left side, you need you need to look at all of this, right? So this thirty kilonewtons, which is this one here, is on the left side of your section plane, isn't it? So it needs to be there. But don't forget, we are doing the summation of forces in the y direction. So you need to have a force at the end. So here you have 30, which is your 30 kilonewtons force that you have there. So you cannot have 30 multiplying x minus 7, because that is not a force, that is a moment. Right? That's why you have exponent 0 there. So then this x minus 7 exponent 0 becomes equal to 1, and then you end up having only 30 kilonewtons, right? That's why you have exponent zero there. All right? Very good. So let's now do, let's continue our analysis. And let's do now summation of moments about x equal to zero. Right? Let's start with the 20 kilonewtons. What is the moment produced by these 20 kilonewtons about point X? So the distance that we need, we need this distance right from here to here, right? To get the moment, right? I need to multiply the force, 20 kilonewtons, by this distance to get the moment, right? How much is that distance? X minus 1, very good. So I need to have 20 times... x minus 1, Macaulay bracket there, why, because if I'm cutting my beam here and look at the left side, that, that 20 kilonewtons is not there, so there is, should not be any moment there, so that's why you need a Macaulay bracket there, and what about the exponent now, one. needs to be 1, right, because now I want a moment, so I need to have 20 times x minus 1, for x greater than 1. Yeah, that's it. So let's do now the moment produced by these 85 kilonewtons about point x. So I need to have this distance now from here to here. How much is this distance? x minus 4. Yes, very good. So I will have minus 85 times x minus 4, Macaulay bracket again, <coughs> Macaulay bracket again, <coughs> now let's do this one, 30 kilonewtons, sorry, is positive or negative, plus 30 times x minus 7. Exponent 1 as well, you see? Is it difficult? But we have now the distributed loads, right? We didn't finish yet. So let's work out this distributed load here at the top. The moment produced by this distributed load about point X. It's going to be anti-clockwise, so I'm going to continue below. I'm going to continue here. So first thing I need to have is equivalent force. What is the equivalent force of this? 10 times x minus 2. Yes, this is equivalent force. Now, this equivalent force is located at the centroid. Is more or less here. So I need to have this distance now from here to here. How much is this distance? X minus 2 over 2, right? So this distance is X minus 2 over 2. 
Sorry? I cannot see? Yeah, you can. Right? So, I'm going to add this x minus 2 over 2 over there. So, I'm just going to remove this to get it, it clean. And then, I'm going to add here. I'm going to put this way x minus 2 over 2. Okay? So, or if you want, we, you can put x minus 2 square over 2, right? So I can say okay as you can see the Macaulay bracket here as an exponent 2 now but it is telling me if my x is lower than 2 this term is 0 right so we have here x minus 2 square this means if x is lower than 2 so in this case my a is going to be equal to 2 I will get 0 that's what Macaulay bracket is telling me. And that is correct because for x lower than 2, it means I am cutting my beam before point C. And then if I look at the left side, there is no distributed load there. So the moment should be 0, right? OK? And the last one we have to do is this one here now. The moment produced by this distributed load here. We are going to do the same way. We are going to replace this with an equivalent force, which is equal to, you tell me, 10 times x minus six. 6. This is the force. <coughs> this is the force, right? Now, for the moment, I need to multiply this force by this distance here, from here to here, which is x minus 6 over, right? Is it correct or not? And then I just need now to add this term here. So look at this. The moment is going to be clockwise now. So minus 10 x minus 6. This is the force. I need to multiply by x minus 6 over 2. So I will have x minus 6 squared over 2. All right? That's it. Of course, I need to include the bending moment, mx. So plus mx. And this needs to be equal to 0 to be in equilibrium. Right? And now we have these two equations, one from the transverse shear force and one from the bending moment. We are now ready to plot these diagrams. That's what I want to do now. So I'm going to copy this. This guy is still here. OK. And I'm going to copy these equations now. I'm going to copy the transverse shear equation from Macaulay bracket. Paste. So transverse shear equation here. And let's do something like this. Let's copy the moment equation now, which is this one here.
Okay? For the moment equation, I can, I can send the bending moment to the right hand side and uh, change the signals, right? So this is going to be a minus, this is going to be a plus, this is going to be a minus, this is going to be a minus, this is going to be a plus. All right, so we have here, look at this, we have the shear force, Vx, and we have here the bending moment, Mx equations. And I just need now to plot these guys. So let me extend this. So Vx in this axis and Mx here. Okay? So, we are going to plot now the shear force and the bending moment using these two equations for the shear force, the one on the left, and for the bending moment. Look, Macaulay brackets that are still there. We are going to need now the Macaulay brackets to plot these equations, all right? So let's start with region AB. So let's do something like this, AB. So for AB, we have our X going from zero to one. You all agree with me? Don't forget, our X starts at point A, our X coordinate. So if you want, I can say this is where my x coordinate is, is starting at point A, right? Uh, so, if I look at the shear force equation, look at this, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Yeah, if I look at this equation, look what, what you have to do now. You know that your x is going to be between 0 and 1. So, if you have, if you look at Macaulay terms here, this term, x is going to be always lower than 1. So, this term is going to be 0. Same for this term. x will always be lower than 4 in between point A and point B, of course. This term will cancel as well. X is lower than 7, always. X is lower than 2, always. X is lower than 6, always, right? So we will get Vx equal to 0. So Vx equal to 0 between point A and B is basically this result that we had before in the morning. Let's see what happens for the bending moment. I'm going to copy the bending moment equation as well. This is the bending moment equation. Look, for x between 0 and 1, this term is 0, this term is 0, 0, 0, 0. Right? So it means our bending moment between point A and B, our bending moment is going to be also <coughs> zero in this section of my beam, right? Between A and B. <coughs> what about now section BC? For section BC of your beam, you will have your x greater than 1 and lower than 2, right? x greater than 1 and lower than 2 corresponds to this region here, BC of your beam, isn't it? 
So let's see what, what, is, what is happening now there from the, our Macaulay bracket equations. Let's see the terms that are zero, the terms that are not zero. Look at this, x minus one, the first one. Is it zero or not? Are you sure? X is, do you think x is lower than one? No, x is bigger than one, right? Always, isn't it? So this term here is going to be, I'm going to do it in red now. This term here is going to be minus 20. Sorry, x minus 1 power 0 times 1, isn't it? So this term is going to be equal to minus 20. What about this term here? Do you think it is 0 or not? Look, x is lower than 2. So if x is lower than 2, it is going to be lower than 4, of course, right? So this term is going to be equal to zero. What about this one? Zero as well. What about this one? Zero. What about this one? Zero. So, Between, for x between 1 and 2, our vx is going to be equal to minus 20 and constant, which means right? Is this the same we obtained before? Let's check. Look here, minus 20 constant, right? In the morning, we got, we got this, right? Great. What about the Benny moment now? So, how much is this term going to be? Is it going to be zero or not? No, because x is greater than one. So this term is going to be minus 20 times x minus one. That's it, right? What about this term? Zero. zero. What about this, next one? Zero. Next one also, zero. Zero and zero. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this, one. <laughs> this one is not zero, right? So it means that's all we have for the bending moment. And then we can say that our bending moment is going to be equal to minus 20x minus 1. Don't forget our x is between 1 and 2. This means is this region here of the beam, we are doing the diagrams, region BC. And then if I plot now the bending moment, so this is the equation of a line. Again, this one you have here in red, this equation in red, this is the equation of a line. So the first point is x equal to 1, which gives us 1 minus 1 is 0, times 20 is 0, right? Which gives us this point. The second one is if I replace x by 2, I get minus 20, which means is this point here, minus 20, minus 20 here. So... We have two points, I just connect these two points with the line and then I get my distribution for the bending moment. Let's compare with previous one. Look, goes from zero to minus 20, the bending moment, right? Right? So we got same result at the end. Okay, so let's continue. Let me delete this. I need some space. Let's go now to the region CD. Which is for x lower than 2. Uh, 
sorry, greater than 2 and lower than 4. Isn't it? We are going to do the analysis for this region, CD, which corresponds x between 2 and 4. Starting with the shear force. So we will have this term is not 0. This term is going to be minus 20. What about this term? Zero. Zero, zero right? Zero. What about this one? Not zero. not zero. So this term is going to be minus 10 times x minus 2. I am just putting what Macaulay bracket is telling me. He's telling me that if my x is greater than a, if my x is greater than a, then I just replace the square brackets with the curved brackets. Basically, that's what we have to do, right? And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just replacing here the square brackets with the curved brackets. OK? The next term is this one, which for x between 2 and 4 is also 0, right? So this is going to be my vx. Look, basically this term will give me minus 10x, right? Because I have minus 20 here plus 20. They cancel each other. Then I get minus 10x at the end. So minus 10x, if I replace x by 2, I get minus 20, which is this point, minus 20. If I replace x by 4, I got minus 40, which is this point here. Right? And then I just connect these two points with a line, and then I get my shear force. Let's check. Here it is. Minus 40. Goes from minus 20 to minus 40. And now the bending moment. For the bending moment you have, this term is not zero, right? Don't forget our x is between 2 and 4. So this term is going to be minus 20 x minus 1. This term is 0. This term is 0. But this term is not 0, right? x is greater than 2 x is greater than 2, so I need to include this term, which is minus 5 x minus 2 square. Just replacing the square brackets with curved brackets. And this term is equal to 0 because my x is lower than 6. And so this is going to be my bending moment mx. for the region of the beam between points C and D. So point C is x equal to 2. If I replace here x by 2, I get minus 20, isn't it? This term is 0 if I replace x by 2. And then I have here minus 20 times 1, which is minus 20. So it means we are at this point, minus 20. The other point that I need is point D, which corresponds to x equal to 4, this 4 here. If I replace here x by 4, I get how much? I have here 2 squared is 4, so minus 20 here, 
minus 60, so minus 80, right? So I get here, let's say, minus 80. And then, don't forget, this is quadratic in x. The coefficient of x squared is minus 5, so it's negative. So it means we need to connect these two points with a parabola like this one. And if you compare again, this is what you get. What you got in the morning, exactly the same distribution for the bending moment, right? Okay. So let's go to the next one. So next one is between point D and E. And our X, our X will sit between 4 and 6, isn't it? Right? Okay? So, starting with the shear force, this term is 0 or not? No. Not 0, so we have minus 20. What about this term? No. no. So I will get what? Plus. Plus 85. Yes, very good. Plus 85. What about this term? Is it zero? Yes, yes this one is zero. Yes. What about this term? No. no. So I will get what? Minus 10. Minus 10. X minus 2. Okay? What about this term? Zero. Zero. So I don't include this one. So this is my Vx. Okay? So if I replace x by 4, I have then 65 minus 20. It means 45, isn't it? 45, it means is this point here. And then to get my point E, I will replace x by 6 in this equation, and then I will get 65 minus 40, I get 25, isn't it? So 25 is this point. So I get this distribution here. Let's confirm. Here it is, right? You see? We are getting exactly the same diagrams when we use Macaulay bracket. Now the bending moment equation. So basically you have these two equations with Macaulay brackets. You just need to see the terms that are zero and the terms that are non-zero. And then you just plot the curves. That's it. Right? So this one here, for x between 4 and 6, you need to include the first term, which is going to be minus 20, x minus 1. You need to include this one as well, plus 85, x minus 4. This term is 0. x is always lower than 7. You need to include this term. Minus 5. x minus 2 square. And this term is also 0, right? Isn't it? Huh? And so this is equal to your bending moment. Okay, can you please replace here x with 4? -10. 
Minus? Sorry? 10. I hope it's not. It's minus 10. Yeah, if you replace here x with 4. So you will have here minus 60. Minus 20. No, no. Minus 60. This is minus 60. And this one, if you replace x by 4, is minus 20, right? So the result is minus 80, isn't it? Uh, you guys are trying to... You are trying to trick me. I think. So minus 80, right? So we have this point. Now please replace x by 6. Replace x by 6. Minus? Oh, that's when minus 10 comes from, right? So you have minus 10. And so, again, this is a quadratic equation in x again. So you need to go from here to here like this. Right? Let's confirm. Yeah, look at that. It checks very well uh, with our previous result. Okay, any questions so far? You guys are following or not? Okay, good. Let me now move then. All right, so now for region EF, we get x greater than 6 and lower than 7. Come on, just a little bit more. We will finish soon. For x between 6 and 7, we will get this term, right? Minus 20. We'll get this term. Plus 85. This term is zero, isn't it? X is always lower than seven. We have this term. Minus 10 X. minus 2 and we have this term now this term now needs to be included because my x is greater than 6 so I will have also plus 10 x minus 6 this is my equation for the transverse shear force please replace there x by 6 and Tell me how much that is. It's 25? 15. 25 or 15? 25. 25 here. That point. Now replace x by 7. Is it 25 as well? Is it 25? So you also have 25 here. So it means we will have a constant and equal to 25. Let's check. Yeah, it's correct. Constant and equal to 25. Now for the many moment, we will have this term. Minus 20. X minus 1. We will have this term. Don't forget our x is between 6 and 7. So plus 85 x minus 4. This term is 0. Right? We will have this term. <laughs> x 
And we will have this term as well. So plus 5x minus 6 squared. Okay? So please replace Please replace uh, x with 6 15 No, x with 6, not 7. How much? Minus 10. So we get this point minus 10 here. Please replace now x with 7. 15. <coughs> Look here. There's one important thing here. You might be tempting, tempted to say this is a quadratic equation in x. A parabola. But be careful here because look, if you expand these two terms, you will get here minus 5, sorry, minus 5 x squared minus 4x plus 4. And from this one you will have plus 5 x squared uh, minus 12x plus 36, right? Look, this term x squared cancels with this one. Here we have a minus, here we have a plus. So the quadratic term goes away. So in fact, this is going to be a linear equation, not a quadratic one. And so we have these two points. We just need to connect them with a line. And we get the distribution of the bending moment, right? Which, which checks very well with the previous one, this one we obtained before, okay? So just one more to get this final section of the beam. And for this, this one more, basically, we need to have all the terms there. So basically, between For section FG of my beam, which is for x greater than 7 in lower than 10, we will need basically to get all the terms. Okay? But of course, we need to be careful with Macaulay brackets. So, we will have minus 20. plus 85 minus 30 minus 10 x minus 2 plus 10 x minus 6 so this is equal to vx okay So if you replace, please, come on, if you replace x in this equation here in red, x with 7, how much do you get? If you replace x with 7, minus 5, so you get this minus 5 here. And if, if you replace x with 10, you get also minus 5. So you get this minus 5 here. Okay? And now, for your bending moment, you have to consider all this equation here. I'm going to copy it very quickly. Look, again, this minus 5x squared will cancel with this plus 5x squared. So you have the equation of a line, again. And this needs to be equal to your bending moment. And if you replace this x by 10, you get a bending moment of... If you replace here x with 10, 
You need to replace 10 and 7, right? So did you replace for 7 already? For 7 is 15, right? And if you replace now for 10, in this equation, you replace x with 10, zero. you get 0. Which should be 0 because, look, you don't have any moment at point G, right? So the moment there should needs to be equal to 0. Point G is a free end. All right? So you got exactly the same diagram that you obtained before when we decided to cut the beam six times in six different regions, right? So you can solve this problem by doing like we did in the morning, by cutting the beam six times without using Macaulay bracket. It's perfectly fine. Or if you want, you can solve these problems using Macaulay bracket. I'm not going to tell you in the exam that you need to use Macaulay bracket or not. I, I know that you are going to ask that. It's up to you, OK? I just want you to get the bending moment and shear force diagrams. If you use Macaulay bracket or if you don't use Macaulay bracket, it's up to you. Sorry? If this is a different formula? A deflection. Uh, we didn't study that yet. We didn't learn that yet. But yes, there is a deflection formula for the beam, yeah. Yeah. But we didn't study yet. This is only the bending moments and shear force equations, okay? All right, any question? No? So see you Thursday then. <laughs>